Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a recent release from Scaletrains.com. It's the EMD SD45. We've got phase 1B, 1 and 2C here. We'll take a look at the Pennsylvania Railroad and Seaboard Coastline versions of this SD45 starting right now. All right, let's go ahead and unbox just one of these for you. Had to break the uh, seal of quality there. Skill Trains puts on the bottoms. Operator's manual, as you see here, pretty short and sweet. It's a tri-fold out, 20 functions listed on the function button and slot chart, but 28 functions listed on the DCC function mapping. You can always pause that to get a better look. Then the locomotive itself. It's in the plastic blister here, surrounded by foam. It's kind of been the tried and true method of model trains for a while now to get them safely to your layouts. So now with these, there's a little panel that pops off here, so you're going to want to grab it from the bottom to get it out of the case. And then it's free from the packaging. Also, quick programming note, you're going to want to remove these truck immobilizers, as I call them. Sometimes they blend in with the trucks. You set it down, you don't set it down perfectly, and it'll fall right over. So be sure to remove those from packaging as well. All right, let's take a look at Seaboard Coastlines version first. Now, this is 2024 with a build date of October 1971. Gives you an idea of when these locomotives ran, what era they'd fit into if you're a new modeler thinking about the 70s era. We're going to start on the front here with my fingerprint magnet of a turntable that we have just gotten for the reviews here. I'm going to zoom in, take a look at the front as we talk about some of the details. Now one of the things you might notice is got a low mounted headlight and then you've got the gyro lights up here lit number boards we'll get in the lighting later high mounted horn there up top sand filler hatch and grab irons are separately applied you got the scale trains metal coupler for this locomotive all the accessory hoses coupler cut lever is also on the front and this drop step here is fixed with finely detailed plastic handrails that are straight from what I see outside the box here on this locomotive. Give you a bit of a side angle so you can catch a little better view of that and that also brings into view the Motorola ASP16 Firecracker Communications antenna right here on the cab roof. You can see that very clearly. That survived transit without any problems as well. Now these MU clusters, three each MU hoses are tucked behind the pilot here. They do have silver tipped ends as you can see on this airline hose right here at the very tip of my pointer, just like that silver tipped end. Tri-colored class lights are here in the last light housing and we'll test those out later as well. Obviously nice cab detail including the windshield wipers there on the cab windows are a nice metal those are this is a 35 line cab with standard front windshields so it kind of tells you more about the cab details a little tiny scl logo for seaboard coastline sticking out there print is nice and legible on that as well so we go along the side here some of the common features that you'll see on a lot of locomotives including battery box doors, but really nicely detailed. There's tread plate on the walkway all the way down the side. Got the fuel tank with the sight glass and the emergency shut off here and here. Everything looks nice. The yellow sill on this looks good. Seaboard coastline on the side is written well also. You start to see on the top, dustbin hatch, exhaust, dynamic brake fans here. 
and then the radiator fans a little further back so we'll work our way back there to the trio of radiator fans up top here the SD45 has a flared radiator effect a little more tapered than what you'd see like on an SD70M but we do have flared radiators which you'll see as we loop back here to the rear you can see all of the grab irons that are separately applied from this angle pretty well. Another sand filler hatch, rear lights, coupler cut lever, the scale trains of metal couplers and more accessory hoses. And the uh, airline hose with the silver tipped end again. You also have the striping, caution striping on the end, black and white, both the front and rear. Now we're going to swing around to this side. Got rear lit number boards as well, I believe, but we'll check that out in the lighting aspect of the video. This little area right here just warns the crew, hey, there's a step coming up, so that's point painted yellow, which is accurate from what I could find online. More details on this side as well. Really nice truck detail, but I want to show you the front truck to really talk about that. Also rear windshield wipers on this back portion here now on this front truck going to zoom in here so you can see this hanging off the second truck going on to the axle there is a speed recorder so just showing you just the truck detail including that speed recorder there also kind of tucked in here is a frame mounted bell so we'll see how those sound like with the ESU sound system that is in the sound equipped locomotives. So now we're back to the front, just giving you a good once over of the locomotive. And we'll take a quick look at the Pennsylvania Railroad scheme. All right, so Pennsylvania Railroad, a little bit of a different uh, setup on the actual SD45 here. We'll go over some of the differences on the locomotive that you may see yourself by kind of spotting features all right so first difference you see probably just sticking out at you is the difference between the firecracker antenna and the sinclair antenna right up top still have a high mounted horn there different uh horn instead of a five chime on the other seaboard course line this is just a three chime on the nose same kind of configuration in general you do see class lights. Uh, the headlight is mounted in between the number boards versus the nose. This is where scale trains will do different road name detail. MU receptacles look like ditch lights here. One and two, but those are actually MU receptacles. So those are angled MU receptacles for early MUing. Drop step here actually moves. The other one wasn't moving. I don't know if that was just in place and I didn't push hard enough, but I prefer not to mess with those things. And then you've got this nice see-through detail down here for the pilot, where you step up here. Again, metal couplers. As we turn around this way, though, one thing that will really stick out to you, and having a hard time with the lighting on this just because it's so dark. So we'll zoom in even further. Right there is an early three-step, three-strap cab signal cabinet on top of the battery box. So you can see that there. That's obviously a difference from the Seaboard coastline that'll stick out like a sore thumb. So some of the other things I didn't talk about on the other locomotive. You may see here like the jacking pads with the hole that's accurate for the real thing. We work our way back. You see the Pennsylvania Railroad Keystone right there. It's nice and nicely printed along with a lot of warning labels and such along the side. ECI barcode right there. Towards the rear, we didn't talk about the handbrake, but that's installed as well right there. And as we bring back the rear end here. Trying to keep this in focus as we turn it around. This will give you a good shot of the handrails. Pretty much straight out of the box. Very little 
fluctuation in them. Maybe a little bit of a wave there, but the handrail protectors have kept them in pretty good condition in transit. There you can really see the flare of the radiator there. And on this version, um, you may also be able to see the lift rings, which are on the corners. Just out of view, it looks like. There's a, uh, one of the lift rings. There's several installed, very finely detailed versions in the Pennsylvania Railroad Keystone on the back of the locomotive as well. And as we come up here to this side, you'll see the Pennsylvania Railroad Keystone one more time on the blower housing there. And a different window configuration on this locomotive as well compared to the Seaboard Coastline. So this one has these wind deflectors installed. Another good look at the truck detail, including I believe sanding lines right there, tucked in pretty nicely down, low mounted bell again. And we're back to the front. All right, we'll fire up the Seaboard Coastline first by pressing F8. This is a ESU sound decoder installed. We'll go through some functions. Move that back a hair so I can see what's going on. So we had the headlight. There's headlight F0. F1. Bell. ESU sounds great. That bell is perfect. To his horn. I just did a little grade crossing there, but ESU horns are really playable. So I did all that with F2. But just a light touch of F2 gives you a really short horn blast. So F3, couple of crash. KF4 is dynamic brake. Knowing ESU, they want to be realistic. And scale trains, so we'll go ahead and move that because it's not going to make any whine until it moves. dynamic brake line. And they've killed some light so you can see the lit number boards which are very evenly done, nicely done on those from what I can see. You be the judge for yourself. F5 are class lights. These are the multiple color class lights that you see there. Every press of F5 changes the color, eventually turning them off. F6 uh, ditch lights aren't applicable on here. F7 effect light. So up top we got the gyro light mounted up by the number boards. F8 we already talked about, which starts the locomotive up. F9's drive hold, this is where you can really simulate taking the load slack out of a train by hitting F9, increasing the RPMs, 
and then releasing it to actually move. So right now I've hit F9. As you can see the RPMs are increasing from the prime mover and we have no movement. That's to simulate you know, getting all the slack out of the train or holding um, a brake on or whatever they do before they really get going or if they're just starting out in a higher notch. So if I release F9 this thing will go moving and there it goes. So let me go ahead and stop that. Put it a little back to center here. F10's independent brake. F11 manual radiator fan, 12 headlight dimmer, 13 air dryer, 14 UDE light, 15 isolation switch. Here's the UDE light, by the way, on F14. I figured some people would want to see that right up there between the number boards again. Sixteen air dryer, seventeen brake set release valves, eighteen sanding valve, nineteen short air let off, twenty compressor, twenty one handbrake ratchet, twenty two cab door, twenty three engine engine compartment doors. See some of these I haven't heard, so let's try that. A very subtle sound there on engine compartment doors, but you do hear some sound going on there. You can manually notch up with 26 and 27 functions only if F28 is on which is enabling the manual notching and we got radiator shutters on 25, reverser center on 24 and engine compartment doors we talked about on 23 so 28 full functions on this didn't really have time to go over them all especially as much time as I've already spent on this video but I wanted you to be able to see this in motion Another thing, you can probably see light reflecting down here. There is truck lighting that allows the crews to see the locomotion. locomotive is in motion at slow speeds at night or whatever. You can see that reflecting off of my pointer there. All right, on the rear, more of the same. Beautifully lit number boards and the actual class lights work again try uh, multiple colored class lights. One thing some people were asking about online was step lighting that only shows up on one side or truck lighting that only shows up on one side. There is indeed truck lighting on this side as well. So I wanted to show you that. You can see there shining down on the ground. All right here we have the AccuTrack speedometer. We're going at four speed steps. It wouldn't move at one. It's a little lurchy at two, three it started to smooth out, but for some reason the speedometer errored out at all of those speeds. So we're trying four here, see what the slowest speed that we can record is on this locomotive. As it enters the little area here. It's 0.9 miles an hour, the lowest I've seen prior to that is 1.7. Pretty good for slow speed control on this locomotive. I'll go ahead and show you what we're seeing with our normal speed steps. Here's one speed step, doesn't move. There's two, get noticeable lurch, but it has not been broken in. So that could be a factor. Three, everything smooths out. Four, And five. We're going to go ahead and stop this, go in reverse, see how it operates in reverse. Again, one, not registering any movement. Two, hear it engage and it begins moving. Three, still some lurching going on in three, four. Everything's smoothing out and running smoothly. I don't see any lurching. Kind of paying attention in between the ties for that. And five. So a little bit of a lurch when we change the speed step and we'll smooth out again. So there you have it. Um, the lurching in general, like I said, it hasn't been broken in. I know there's some back EMF adjustments that can be done, I think. I'm not really 
knowledgeable on that. But the locomotive is moving at such a slow speed already. At three and four speed steps, once it smooths out, uh, it's actually moving slower than some of the other competitors. It's actually moving slower than some of the other items on the market do at speed step one, so you be the judge on that, but usually a good break-in fixes those things. All right, now we're going to do a pull test. So this thing was very beefy out of the box, so we'll see what it pulls. Okay, it looks like it maxed out at 3.3 ounces. That's about 50 cars. I have a feeling it's going to pull better than that, but I don't know. Because there's a lot of weight to these things, and we'll do weight next. Heard the brake squeal, a little bit of prime mover notching up there for those folks that asked for that. All right, so this locomotive has a capacitor in it, so if you have dirty track, no problem. As I took it off the track there for a few seconds, it still ran. One pound, 3.4 ounces on this. Pretty robust for such a short locomotive, or a shorter locomotive, that is. 19.4 ounces, 550 grams. Very good. That's why I think it'll probably have better pull power than what we got on the gauge, but who knows. All right, we'll use the AccuTrack 2 speedometer as a backdrop for the coupler height check on point there. Appears to be on point there, but you be the judge. All right, here's the wheel set check. So far everything's good with NMRA compliance, so wheel sets are good as well. That gives you a quick look at the bottom. Alright, last test I like to do is new, first time we're doing that, it's an 18 inch radius test for our friends. The small layouts, I totally feel for you right now. As you can see, the locomotive is handling the 18 inch radius no problem, so there you have the 18 inch radius check. Oh. Let's wrap this up. It's been a great locomotive, very hefty locomotive at over one pound, three ounces. They operate smoothly. You know, once you get past the first few speed steps, sound great. Tons of great details that are road number and road name specific. So uh, be sure to check these out if you want. Scaletrains.com or your favorite retailer. Put the MSRP on this video at some point. We'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.